good afternoon and welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing okay so today i'm doing something completely different um i was given this tray however i'm going to change it i'm going to upcycle it um and see how it turns out and take you through the process of that as well so at the first i've got to primer it to get rid of this i have given it a good clean um so as much as i can to clean it um although it's really pretty I just want to add my own touch to it, um, it's quite an old tray. So yeah, let's go and see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm going to be using this furniture chalk to be able to primer it first. I'm not sure what effect it's going to help when I add other layers to it, but this is what I'm going to use as a base to primer. Okay, so I am actually just using a small brush to go around the edges to begin with to pop this paint on. However, it's so warm on the day that I was doing this. Um, it's really hot at the moment and the paint was drying really, really fast. So I needed to go on as quickly as possible. So I just used a small brush to go around the edge. However, I am looking at this thinking it is going on very, very thin. I was expecting it to go on thicker. Um, I don't know why, I don't know if it's because of the material of the tray, it's quite shiny, but I decided to go with a sponge brush to just to make sure I can get it on. Now I did go around the edges, so I did go up and around the tray to get rid of that brown. Um, again, it didn't stick as well as I thought it would. Um, and I knew it would need more layers. So this is the first layer going on. Um, and this is using the chalk furniture paint. So that's the first layer done. Um, so yeah, so just a thin layer. And then I do a second layer on top. Again, with even with the second layer, it still did not... Sorry, I'm just getting comfortable in my chair. <laughs> um, it still did not... Um, do what I wanted to do I wanted it to cover it completely um, and I'm just not patient enough I want things and I want results I understand artists need to be patient but in the end I just went you know what back in 2016 when I first started painting I literally used to do paint pours so what I was doing was getting my acrylic paint out I do put a dab of water in to thinen out those paints now some people use um, liquitex to um, thinen out the paint as well um, and the silicon that i've just poured in there is um, sorry sprayed inside there is to help with cells so i don't know if you do paint pores or seen paint pores some of the silicon that i put use on here does help the cells however i just didn't have enough paint um i thought i had plenty of my white so in the end i went with the brush and started to push this down now i weren't going to upload this video at first and i thought you know what i'm going to show you basically what happens when you have not done this technique for a long time i used to be a master at this technique used to love doing it i've sold a few paintings um, with this technique and the cells that I produced were amazing. Um, my advice to anybody doing this is make sure you've got enough paint. Um, don't just do it thinly. I know I wanted a thin layer on this, um, but yeah, so it didn't work as well as I wanted it to initially at this stage. Um, I wanted to just have the marble effect, very subtle, but in the end it just went a complete mess. I did get the heat gun on it, um, because sometimes adding heat allows the cells to pop a little bit more um, with the silicon and it reacts. In the end, I just did this. Um, I used the brush to literally move everything across, um, mixed it all up. It was basically, let's just start again. Although, once I'd actually done this and added the heat um you'll see the cells start popping now it looks as though the paint is thick in places but it's not it's just the way that the bubbles were underneath the paint as i was moving it around i thought it was actually lumps and bumps um there was actually a few lumps and bumps in there which i took out um but this was amazing um you can see that the popping of the cells you can see the marbling um but it was just not the right colour for me and I wanted to add more detail 
Um, so this is what I was doing. I just got a bit of the brown out again um, and thought I'd be able to add a few more. Now, I was trying to scrape the barrel as much as I can here just to try and get as much out and just not waste anything. I really didn't want this tray just to go to... The, at this point, I think I was thinking, shall I just pour it all down the sink, clean it all off and just start all again? Um, but... I'm persistent, I weren't going to let it go to waste and I wanted it to just be perfect. So I just weren't giving in. I used this, now this is my oil based paint, I don't know where or why or how it is. It's a really old paint but I love it because as you can see in that tub it cleans really well, it's like, like an oil to it. I love it. Um, I don't know where it's from. Um, I have not got a clue. It does say acrylic actually on the bottle. So I don't know if it's because it's so old that it's um, cured in a different way. But I just love the textures. I've got this in gold as well and a slightly middle rose colour as well. It's absolutely perfect. So that was it. I just give up. The next day though, once it started drying, this was the morning after, I was falling in love with this tray. I love the pinks, I love the copper colours, I love the brown, I love the cells, I love the textures. It was doing exactly what I wanted it to do. However, it weren't the basically wasn't the, the initial idea that I wanted, but I was in love with it and I love it so much. Um, it was great, it gives it more character. Now I don't know what to do. Do I put a resin layer on the top? Let me know in the comments and please give me a thumbs up if you've liked this video. And thank you for watching and I'll see you in the week. Bye.